Dear students, Good morning to everyone. We are going to learn about the environment. Systematically, studying human interaction with the environment is called environmental science. We would start the lesson first by learning about our own body. Our body, health, hygiene. The machine consists of various parts. In similar manner, our body also consists of various parts. Because of these parts, we are able to do different activities. For example, moving, playing, speaking, reading, writing, etc. They are seen externally. Whereas, the activities like respiration, digestion, circulation, excretion, etc. take place inside our body. So, let's be careful with our body. Okay, children. Good. Now we need to be strong and what makes us strong? Our muscles make us strong. Yes. You are correct. Muscles Muscular system Muscles help for the movement of bones. Organs like the heart and the elementary canal are also made up of muscle. Some muscles help us in contraction and others in expansion. There are about 600 muscles in our body. Bones Bones are mainly made up of calcium and phosphorus. They are very hard. Inside the bones, there is bone marrow. Red blood corpuscles are produced in the bone marrow. The organs and the systems of a body are protected safely inside an erected bony frame. The bony structure is called the skeleton. This bony frame not only gives shape to our body but also protects the important organs inside the body. There are 206 bones in our body. Bones cannot move on their own. They move with the help of muscles. As bones and muscles work together, we are able to do all the activities. Joints The place where two bones join together is called joint. There are two kinds of joint. They are immovable joints, movable joints. Immovable joints Bones in the skull are connected with one another and they cannot move. These joints are called immovable joints or fixed joints. Movable joints Joints in the neck, arms and legs move. These are called movable joints. With the help of the movable joints, we do many things. Depending on the type of movements, they are of four kinds. They are the ball and socket joint. The hind joint, the pivot and the gliding joint. We have learnt about the immovable joints. Now don't you want to know about movable joints? Okay, are you ready? Can I start? Okay, now let's learn about types of movable joints. The ball and socket joint. If you swing your hand freely around your shoulder, just like a bowler in cricket, you would observe that the ball-like end of the upper arm bone is fixed in the socket of the shoulder bone. Such a joint is called the ball and socket joint. 
the hinge joint observe the movements of your elbow while eating food this joint does not allow the forearm to bend backwards this acts like a hinge joint that joins door to the frame this type of joint is called a hinge joint the pivot joint we all know that we can move our head freely in all directions now we shall learn how it happens the arrangements of bones between the head and the neck help to rotate the head like the top of this joint now bone is shaped like a ring and the other is inside the ring this helps to rotate the head freely it is called pivot joint the gliding joint observe the movement of the backbone while bending and picking up anything from the ground observe carefully the movements of your forearm while you are rotating the key in a clock the joint which helps in these activities is called gliding joint the bones of these joints glide together while they are performing an activity after completing the work the bones come back to the normal position such joints are called gliding joint we should do exercise daily to make the joints work properly children do you know why raj didn't come yesterday he fell down and fractured his leg yes that's very sad let me tell you about your bones and how to take care of them bones and their care the bones and muscles help in running and lifting heavy objects in children bones are very soft tender and brittle therefore they should be very careful while climbing trees and walls and jumping down if water contains more fluorine people get a disease called fluorosis bones in such patients will get brittle and lose their shape the movements of joint will not be proper and it is difficult for them to walk and work like normal people this disease is widely prevalent in nalgonda prakasam and visakhapatnam districts in our state at such places we should use safe drinking water only bones get brittle due to lack of calcium and phosphorus in our food calcium and phosphorus are abundantly found in milk fresh leafy vegetable vegetable fruits eggs shark liver oil and cod liver oil to supplement our diet so will you all take care of your bones good now tell me what fluid runs in our body blood it is and it's red in color that's right we will now learn about blood circulation in our body blood circulation heart heart is one of the most vital organs of our body it is located between two lungs in the rib cage slightly leaning towards left it is made up of special kind of muscles and work like a pump continuously without any rest it has four chambers the two upper chambers are called auricles the two lower chambers are called ventricles this contraction and expansion of the heart is called heartbeat 
doctors use a stethoscope to measure it if we go to a doctor whenever we have a fever doctor uses a stethoscope to find whether the heartbeat is normal or not circulation of blood through arteries is easily felt at the wrist by sensation this is called pulse the blood which is oxygenated is pure and which does not contain oxygen is impure now anyone tell me what does a doctor have in his hands all the time it's called a stethoscope that's right who likes tasty food we all love to have tasty food right food we eat digest to give us energy so get ready children we are now going to learn the process of digestion process of digestion we need food to live and energy to work we get energy from the food we take in order to get energy food is to be digested which will be absorbed into blood and carried to all parts of the body our body contains digestive system this system comprises of mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and anus there are digestive glands in the mouth stomach and small intestine they secrete digestive juice they act on food and digest it digestion in the mouth when food is taken through mouth it combines with saliva and passes through esophagus and reaches stomach saliva turns the carbohydrates into sugar there are salivary glands in the mouth which secrete saliva digestion in the stomach stomach is a sac like structure here food is partially digested and converted partially into liquid state This is called a chyme. In the stomach, gastric juice is produced which acts on proteins and digests them. Digestion in the small intestine. The first part of the small intestine is called duodenum. The ducts of the liver and pancreas open into it. The latter part of the small intestine is ileum. There are intestinal glands in the walls of the small intestine. These glands secrete and release intestinal juices. These juices digest the food completely. The digested food being absorbed into blood through the walls of small intestine is called absorption digestion in the large intestine the undigested food in the small intestine passes into the large intestine here no digestion takes place it absorbs water from the undigested food bacteria turn the remain into fecal matter this fecal matter enter the rectum and then is ejected out through the anus so children always remember to eat is a necessity but to eat intelligently is an art now tell me what will you do if you see a person is hurt we must give him first aid and inform to an ambulance that's right 
first aid a sudden unexpected and unpleasant event which may cause an injury to the body is called an accident accidents differ in different context wise falling down getting hurt insect snake monkey pig dog and other animal bites when an accident occurs we should take the victim to a doctor the treatment which we give to the victim before we take him to the doctor is called first aid let us learn about the first aid for some accidents or injuries accidents may occur in our school also some accidents first aid injuries while running or playing the skin often gets injuries or cuts or abrasions we have to do first aid in this situation first wash the wound with clean water and wipe it with clean cloth after that clean it with antiseptic lotion and then apply antiseptic powder or ointment and dress the wound with cotton then take the victim to the doctor i am really scared about insects are you now let's discuss few first aid tips for insect bite insect bite when insects like honey bee or any other insect bites wash the wound with clean water immediately pull the insect sting out with forceps apply antiseptic ointment and take the victim to the doctor for proper treatment scorpion bite first tie the upper part of scorpion bite with a piece of cloth wash the affected part with tartaric acid or potassium permanganate solution it gives immediate relief to the patient then consult a doctor for treatment while traveling at nights carry a torch or a lantern compulsorily for lighting we should keep our surroundings clean and free from insects and worms do not sleep leaning against the wall because snakes and scorpions crawl on it poisonous snake bite when a poisonous snake bites tie the upper and lower part of the wound tightly with a piece of cloth take him to a doctor immediately for an anti venom injection dog bite wash the wound of a dog bite thoroughly with soap water immediately clean it with antiseptic lotion take him to a doctor for anti rabies injection so be careful even when you play with your pet animals okay that's good